With the launch of their latest port of a previously PlayStation exclusive game over to PC, there's been a couple of interesting and possibly infuriatingly stupid and typically Sony consumer hostile details hinting at PlayStation's plans for the future of their games on PC coming out of the clever buggers data mining their way through Marvel's Spider-Man. Hello again, I am Blunty, and with Spider-Man on PC, PlayStation seems to have decided they have enough games on PC now to justify a dedicated section of their website for them. A dedicated link in Spider-Man's own launcher window pops you right to it, and that didn't exist before last week. But before we take a big old bite of my main point here, my question to you folks is, what PlayStation exclusive game, new or old, original, remake, remaster or reboot, would you most want to see Sony bring across to the glorious PC Master Race space? So, now to the main point of this video, of the unannounced and as yet unofficial things that have been exposed by data miners tearing open the seams of Spider-Man on PC, there's two in particular that have me flipping between genuinely hopeful that PlayStation are about to do something wildly out of character to them and, and then on the other side as the experience of basically their entire history as a corporate entity should have taught anyone with a skull containing the bare minimum amount of neurons capable of assembling a self-aware consciousness, I'm sitting here waiting for the other metaphorical shoe to drop on just how consumer hostile, arrogant and annoying Sony are about to be to PC players. To the possible future of not just this game, but all of PlayStation's ongoing efforts to penetrate PC gaming. And the first was the discovery of references in the code to PlayStation Network integration. Now, as it stands, Marvel's Spider-Man has no such active feature, nor does any other previous PlayStation Studios game ported over to PC, which, frankly, has always confused me. Pretty much every major publisher loves to have their own little account systems as deeply tied into useful features in their games as they can manage. Uh, that's not to make the gamer's experience any better, of course. Instead, it's a wonderful source of very specific data collection about how people play their games, who they are, where they are, how long they play, how often they play, which modes they play, what content they like most, and which players spend the most money most often on their microtransaction bullshit. But they also have to make this acceptable and even tempting to players to actually use so they can gather that data. So they offer up little bonuses, maybe a couple of cosmetics, maybe they, they make it a requirement for any kind of online activity, maybe they tie it to pre-order bonuses, you know, that kind of crap. And Sony, being who they are, it always surprised me that PSN integration wasn't priority number one when they started porting their big name exclusives over to PC. I mean, hell, even Microsoft eventually forced Minecraft players to migrate their Mojang accounts across to Xbox Live. And I mean, don't get me wrong here, Sony still 100% collect a heap of data from their users on PC. In fact, one of the first things you'll see when you first boot Spider-Man is, hey, hey, do you, do you want to let us collect all of the data or just some of the data? You will notice there is absolutely no option for none of the data, please. But without PSN integration as a way to refine their tracking down to specific users and especially connect it across platforms, well, it's not nearly as invasive as you would have expected from Sony or any other large publisher for that matter. So I don't think it's a matter of Sony not wanting to do that sooner. It's it's probably just Sony's general incompetence when it comes to that online stuff that you know they couldn't get it to work properly yet. And I'm I'm not a huge fan of this 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 separate account integration bullshit. Ubisoft are real buggers for it, for example, real buggers. But to their credit, there is some neat stuff tied into their account system that is mildly interesting and slash useful. But full and proper PSN integration just might be coming soon. Perhaps it'll be patched into Spider-Man sometime soon, even. Perhaps it'll come with the Ghost of Tsushima PC port we're expecting about, well, this time next year-ish. What we do know, though, without question, is Spider-Man's files do contain multiple references to code labelled PSN account links and PSN linking entitlements, indicating that they're at least working on it actively. We're hoping to have it ready for this game. And as these kinds of labels are unlikely to be code that was bought over from the PlayStation version, because, well, you don't need to tell a game running on PlayStation that you, there's PS, PSN is linked because you're already on PlayStation hardware and it is already that. Nor do you get any special entitlements for doing so because, well, 
every player is already that, so there's no need for special enticements. So it seems a pretty fair assumption that these are very specific hunks of the PC ports data. In which case, on the brightest side of hope that a corporate monster like Sony will allow us, we can perhaps wish for a future where PC and PlayStation have cross-save, cross-progression, perhaps even cross-play, although we all know how Sony feels about cross-play. They only do it when they're really, 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 really forced to. But maybe it'll be a more common future for PlayStation users. We may even hope that things like DLC and even microtransactions are platform independent and carry with you across PC and PlayStation, but <laughs> I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. It is PlayStation after all. Somewhat linked to this discovery though, and possibly more aggressive, consumer hostile, or maybe useful, data miners have now also found references to PlayStation PC launcher which, just like the previous discovery, is part encouraging, part infuriating. Because again, PlayStation being PlayStation, I am long, long since completely out of any willingness to give them the benefit of the doubt in any earnest way. They lost that privilege long, long ago, and they've done nothing to earn it back. So, this could mean they're working on their own complete launcher and storefront system, like Steam itself, or the Epic Games Launcher, or GOG, which could mean a future of some stuff being exclusive to their own launcher and their own account systems, making it yet another damn PC launcher some gamers will feel a need to have clotting up their systems and complicating when, where, and how the game libraries live and are sorted and stored and managed, and managing multiple storefronts and managing multiple watts and managing multiple accounts. Ah! PC gamers have already made it extremely clear to publishers that we fucking hate this shit. Several publishers who have previously tried to push their own walled-off marketplaces aggressively and launches have learned this lesson the hard way. We don't like it, and we certainly won't use it if given even the slightest choice. Most recently, of course, Bethesda, whose launcher, much like their games, was a misery of buggy unreliability and sluggishness, tried it for a while, and PC gamers told them to bugger off with it, and early this year, Bethesda.net launcher shut down and had its users migrate their accounts and libraries across to Steam, which is itself a long way from being a perfect or ideal platform, but it is at least what we've decided we're willing to tolerate. Now, I think it's relatively unlikely that any PlayStation launcher will become the exclusive home for all future ports, and I expect not even Sony are so arrogant as to think Steam and Epic aren't smarter places to reach PC gamers. I I'm not ruling it out completely, though, because Sony are very arrogant, and I will never underestimate their greed overshadowing their common sense, or willingness to be utterly hostile to their consumers, but I think it's probably more likely that any PSN launcher will be more likely something closer to the Xbox Live PC app, which yes, is a separate marketplace and launcher if you want to use it that way, but that's, that's a long way from its main purpose, and I'd expect it's a long, long way from what most users use it for. I certainly have have never purchased even so much as a single game from the PC Xbox app. Never. Instead, I, again, as I suspect 99% of my other users do, only, only ever use it as a Game Pass related front. Because there's a whole big library of PC games available through Game Pass for nothing but your regular subscription. And PlayStation missed the bus by like years on this stuff and Xbox are just eating their lunch over it. It's no secret that PlayStation are desperately jealous of what Xbox have managed to do and the goodwill that Xbox Live has managed to obtain by just being an actually good value for money service. On the other hand, PlayStation's online services lag a long way behind in every respect. Their recent reboot of the PlayStation Plus services is their latest effort to play catch up on it, and all they did there was overcomplicate things and make customer options worse and more confusing, and they still have crappier service overall, crappier game library offerings, and stupider pricing structures that are pointlessly overcomplicated and confusing and just skeevy. And it's not hard at all to imagine them wanting their own PC launcher ecosystem to push the PlayStation Plus services for cloud stories, for exclusive content, for share play, for cloud streaming, anything at all to drive more subscriptions to that service because, well, that's just more and more money, isn't it? 
and while they'll probably be limited to their own first party titles for at least a while because well because a whole bunch of licensing agreements are already in place for you know Steam and Epic and Xbox Live and all that sort of stuff so I can't see them with much of an offering as far as an Xbox Game Pass equivalent style library of first and third party titles nor with how variable PC hardware can be can I see them offering up a back catalogue of PS1, PS2 and PS3 titles through local emulation because because emulating that stuff on PC is already well, not the most smooth experience as far as any kind of emulation goes, especially for PS3. I mean, there's a reason they don't even bother trying to emulate PS3 on their own hardware. They stream it instead. They might do something with that cloud-based streaming of previous gen titles for PC Overall, though, in which case expect it to be infuriatingly half-assed and region-locked like it already is on PlayStation hardware itself, which, if you're Australian, for instance, and more than a few other countries, you get a much worse deal for your PlayStation Plus money because anything that relies on cloud services just isn't available to you like it is in other places because Sony can't be fucked with local servers for it. So they charge us almost as much as everybody else, but we get far less content for our money. And that's just one of the more recent Sony being a hostile dickhead to its consumers kind of stories. But other stuff, more specific to their PC native stuff, as a, a, an in-house launcher would be useful for, like game trials, that time-limited bullshit stuff they do instead of a normal demo, you know, the kind of demos you'll get from Steam and whatnot, they'll probably do that kind of stuff with their PC launcher. And of course, most obviously, it'll be a place to manage and monitor and track your trophies because they can't do that within Steam. Steam has its own little achievement system that nobody I know even cares about. And if you're real lucky, they'll be tied in with Steam's weird achievement system and also synced cross-platform. So any trophy that I have in Spider-Man here that I earned on PlayStation is also valid in my PC stave. And as some games lock content behind trophies, syncing that across PC and PlayStation would be a very welcome thing indeed. Because some of the trophies on my way to platinuming Spider-Man were a bit of a pain in the ass. And as fun as the game is, there's a few things I just I'm not interested in chasing up a second time. Anyway, it all seems like a logical step for PSN integration and even a dedicated launcher or app for PlayStation Plus stuff, as Sony do seem well, quite earnest in their efforts to get a solid toehold in the strong PC gamer market. Spider-Man Remastered last week is only the latest, of course, joining God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Days Gone, plus a couple of other titles no one actually gives a shit about. Uh, later this year, we'll get Spider-Man Miles Morales, of course, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection is still on the way probably sometime this year, apparently. There's no date for that yet outside of 2022. And of course, next year we'll get Ghost of Tsushima and who knows what else that they haven't uh, nailed down or announced yet. But yeah, that other metaphorical shoe hangs like the Sword of Damocles. I'm sitting here wondering just how PlayStation will manage to make it just, just kind of a bit shit for us consumers because there is always a catch with Sony. There is always a catch with PlayStation always. So thanks for watching and thanks in advance, I suppose, for letting me know what you think about all this in the comments down below. Thank you to those of you who have thumbed and bells and subbed. And thank you as always to the, the, the patrons scrolling up above there, who's above me on support. I massively appreciate. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that, guys. I am Blunty. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.